that's very fitting, right? Because she won't be here next week, y'all. So, <laughs> but uh, now uh, our special guest, uh, Jules, she actually couldn't mm-hmm. make it today, and yeah. we'll see about next week. So, uh, but no, definitely, uh, definitely appreciate Danny being a part of this because it, again, it allows me to take water breaks. So that's. That's really, that's really good. Well, I have <laughs> a great time every time, and I really, really appreciate you having me on so much. So, thank for you. sure, for sure. And you know, we're uh, grifters. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't know if, if the viewers realize, like, you know, uh, well, my viewers realize uh, <laughs> when, when, you get, when you get mixed in with Sil Abdul, you know, you get a uh, weird trolling uh, from weird people with pink hair. It's a long story. <laughs> Uh, but, <laughs> but so, so Danny's been baptized in, uh, in the, the pink hair, pink haired ranger out there, uh, or betas as we call them out here. So yeah, we're here to have fun with geek stuff and we really kind of tune out those who's, yeah. uh, just about the nonsense. Right. So, so cool stuff, cool stuff. And Danny is a welcome addition, um, to the panel as well. So. Enough buttering up Danny here. We need to get <laughs> to this X Men. Is it really though? Is it enough? <laughs> it's a, it's enough of buttering up Danny. Now, I will say, uh, I'll kind of reserve a few thoughts about this episode, but because I want to get your feedback as well. Mm-hmm. Um, now, part of it is probably, probably because on the East Coast, it doesn't drop to three a.m. in the morning. I was probably a little grumpy watching this episode. <laughs> so that probably affected my initial thoughts, but overall I'm enjoying everything, but we're going to talk about it. Uh, Motendo. My, uh, my boyfriend commented and he said, that was enough buttering me up. He says it's definitely. <laughs> he, says it's he, said, he does appreciate your solidarity in telling me not to wear the shiny pants in public with him. <laughs> so. Shout out to David. He says he's enough. He's enough. She gets enough uh, from you. I know. Um, and shout out to uh, Danny's crowd there on your YouTube and X Twitter yes. account. So, uh, tune in every Thursday, except next week. Part of the week after that, we'll see. But, <laughs> but we will definitely be doing our recap. So fun stuff. So episode recap, Motendo, which total giveaway mojo nintendo game things like that uh, the teams are d- debating how to celebrate jubilee's 18th birthday she suggests they go to the arcade of course that's, that's jubilee um uh really interesting interactions you got magneto shooting the idea down jubilee confides in roberto they both go to uh they go actually they play the game system i guess in their room or something like that the motendo this <laughs> Quickly proves to be the latest machinations of Mojo, who uses the technology to suck them into the game in a setting unlike, uh, not unlike the X Men arcade game. Now, Danny, like you know, my generation, we kind of think we're similar generations here. Uh, I remember the X Men arcade game, so yes. that was really dope. What did you think about yes. this first sequence and they getting sucked oh, into the game? There? I loved it because I was like, oh my god, it's the game! <laughs> like it's the game. That's so cool. Literally. Um, now. I turned 18 around the same time Jubilee did in this, Mm. like it's X-Men 97. I turned 18 pretty much within that time frame. And I did not go to the arcade for my 18th (laughs) birthday party. Like that was not my first, my first, like, oh my God, gal, let's go to the, let's go to the arcade. Like, no, that was not my plan. We won't (laughs) discuss what I did, but I mean, good for, jubilee she's a good girl she's a sweet girl she wants to go to the arcade um Mm. and yeah can we talk about how older jubilee is like a foot taller than Uh, eight year old yeah because we will we'll we'll definitely get there but go ahead since i got the picture up go ahead but yeah that was that was one of my only like okay guys Mm. you know the average human pretty much stops growing by 18 years old i don't think she was gonna grow that much she got like some super boots on i don't know but (laughs) i i thought it was really cool they they used a lot of backgrounds and backdrops and stuff from the actual x-men arcade game and i thought that was really cool a nice little nod to to us Mm -hmm. so yeah definitely definitely that no definitely cool references throughout 
these episodes. That's what I'm thinking. It was like it was like a little growth spurt. You know, you got athletes. Maybe Jubilee took on basketball uh, <laughs> at, a, at, a, at an older age. You know, so who knows, right? A little inconsistency there, but mm-hmm. we, we'll we'll live with it. Now, one thing I, I failed to mention before we even got to the story was the intro. People are kind of going crazy about this online every week. There's like a different intro or different little clips. And the first three episodes, you see the gene here. Mm-hmm. This episode, you got this classic gene. Uh, people putting two and two together. Like, oh, of course, that's showing that Madeline, it was Madeline Pryor. Mm-hmm. You know, the first couple episodes. Uh, and then we got the proper gene there. Again, OnlyFans Bo is an amazing <laughs> writer, man. Like, I just... It's a such lot of a shame. <laughs> It's I can't not say it. It's such a shame. Like, why, dude? Why did you have to do unrestricted porn? I'm just saying, bro. It was amazing. Uh, we got Marie here. X Men '97 was excellent for sure. For sure, I, I've definitely been enjoying it overall. So, in this episode, again, they're in the game now. I will say, and maybe this again, maybe this was me about three fifteen a.m. I'm just kind of looking at my client, like, can we get to the storm and force? Like, you know, this oh, is cool and stuff. Um, are you now, Danny? Like, are, are you like a huge Jubilee fan? Because I, I will say this episode is perfect if you were, you know, just totally into Jubilee. I'm just like, she all right, you know, <laughs> she all right, but like. Let's kind of move this around. I don't know. Do you have any fatigue watching this this first half? Um, not really because I love Mojo stuff. Mm-hmm. I love Mojo World. He's such a he's such a creep. And I loved how, come on, skinny Mojo was nightmarish. He was terrifying looking. And I loved it. I love all this. I was really hoping we'd get some Shatterstar. <laughs> I was really hoping we'd see him again, um, but I thought it was kind of cool, and uh, I liked how, you know, all these levels, they're all made from her memories and stuff, and mm-hmm. will make you famous, blah, blah, blah. Right. Sorry, StreamYard just, well, I told them, we got it, thanks, bye, and they just keep <laughs> coming at me. Yeah, distracting. Yeah, I don't know um, I don't know but no, not me. really, not necessarily. I thought it was fun, and I thought it was really cool to see Jubilee basically help herself learn how to control her powers. And not only that, she got to see the potential of where her powers can go. We've never mm-hmm. gotten to see Jubilee be actually powerful. We just see her do the little sparkly fireworks and stuff. But in this episode towards the end of the Jubilee segment, we get to see her do some really cool stuff with her mm. sparkle fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, a way to describe it. Uh, and I said, Jubilee is a cool character. It just, you know, again, uh, I think it was my fatigue uh, just at that time of night, basically. But uh, Mojo explains, you know, he, he has a ratings drought, so he's trying to build up his ratings uh, in, in the Mojo world there transporting jubilee and roberto to different sites when they uh, go to asteroid m you see classic magneto which i thought was pretty cool mm-hmm. you know again just seeing savage that land. from the game mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know i love savage land yeah exactly so it was cool seeing those and maybe it's foreshadowing we'll see the, you know those actual locations in the future but that was a nice nostalgia base you know going through the game and seeing the locations now uh, it says uh, Jubilee and Roberto, they're hacked out of the game by the masked woman and unmasked is older Jubilee, as you was mentioning. Uh, she was the last remaining beta tester created by Mojo for the game. So older Jubilee uh, shows up and I guess this is the classic uh, voice. Uh, Jubilee is what people were saying. Oh, yeah. Uh, cause this is a, yeah, because this is a, a new voice for this Jubilee, probably just because of just voice range. Age, at this point. Yeah. Yeah, and then you got the older one playing uh, older, taller Jubilee. So nice little touch, I feel. I mean, maybe she's wearing kiss boots and we just can't see them. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to reason it, you know, I'm trying to science it in my brain. All right, all right. So, you know, growth spurt. I'm going to go with the growth spurt uh, excuse, uh, you know, because it, it can happen. Now, ultimately, they all team up. Take out Mojo. Uh, Jubilee, Roberto is transferred back. 
and then we get some 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 little little, little action between Jubilee and Roberto. Like I think yo. it ended up being a lot of action. I'm just saying when like, she when, just kind of pounced, and they were in her bedroom. You still want to go to the arcade, Jubilee? <laughs> Things getting zesty. Zesty is one way to describe it. <laughs> but if I if I work right. real, with Roberto. Yeah, if I work. <laughs> one thing I'll say, with Roberto, I know they're holding him back for a reason. I think he's going to just go like Omega level when he yeah. when he starts using his powers. But I was a little irritated, like bro, like come on, bro, like let's let's. Let's power on here. Let's do something. You know? Flame on. <laughs> 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 so something. Uh, we got Josh here. OG Jubilee still sounded so much like Jubilee. To me, love they gave us OG and new voice actresses together. And again, I'm, I'm crediting OnlyFans Bo for any any good ideas. Uh, I don't know. We, we, we may have to bring the dude back, man. We, we just may have to do oh, that. Oh, Lord. Under a pseudonym, though. Under a pseudonym, give him a pen name. I'm just saying, man, this is some good stuff. You like, you know, Brad, Brad Ketchup, you know, Brad, <laughs> Brad of Ketchup. There we go. <laughs> so, it was again, nice, nice Jubilee portion. Uh, you know, you did see her, like I said, kind of level up her, her powers and progress her relationship with Roberto. So, just overall. It, I don't have like a negative grade for it. It, it. it was watchable. I don't feel like I have to like skip this, you know, when I do a rewatch or anything. Danny, what, what, overall, just this portion of the episode, what did you think overall? I liked it. I, I thought it was very Jubilee. And we don't get to see her shine very much. Mm. So, and like I said, we get to see her like actually... It, yeah, it did feel a little like filler, but it was a fun filler and it was a Jubilee filler. And we get to fun see her filler. kind of see the potential of her her abilities. You know, we get to see she gets to see what she's capable of if she just kind of buckles down and focuses on on controlling her abilities. And Music mm. City says it's perfect. I, I'm mad I didn't think of it, but Bo do, OnlyFans is Bo. His uh, his you know pen name can be Brad Hines. <laughs> I love it. That's deep. Um, interesting. So very very interesting first half of this episode. Uh, I didn't really like really time it time it, but I know it, it felt like it was over fifteen minutes. I was like, it oh, was. We're it the was clock the majority here. of the episode. And w- one last thought that just kind of clicked in my head, but it it really fits the theme of, of this series. It being, you know, nineties and everything. Um, it was very nineties video game, very Mm nineties video game. And I, I love the touches of actually using the X-Men arcade game. So Mm -hmm. definitely, definitely that definitely hit the, hit the mark. And, you know, fans of, again, the nineties animated series at that same time, the arcade game was going on. Mm-hmm. Now, I, when I was uh, watching, I was doing a live reaction on, on my Twitter account. If if I bother to stay up late again, I may do that next week. I don't know. But um, during a live reaction, I remember it was a, a I don't know, it was either a Sega Genesis game. It had to be Sega Genesis. It was an X Men game. Mm, uh, yep. And at at the very end, it was like you got you have to reset them. It was saying in the game you got to reset the machine. And like it took me a couple of times to realize, oh, you actually had to push the reset button on the console. Mm-hmm. Now, and because I was like, hold on, I was like, I'm not gonna re I got to the very I'm not gonna reset this here, you know. And so I was afraid to hit the reset button again. I was much younger, man. Um, <laughs> and so when I finally did like the game like activated the ending sequence, I was like, oh wow, that was cool. That was cool. cool they were crazy. tricky. <laughs> so that so that was interesting, uh, with that part of the episode so but what what i was really waiting to get to was the storm forge uh life death part one uh situation here and i tell you they uh had a lot of a lot of ground to kind of make up to kind of get this story going in my opinion you had storm and forge settled in forge's cabin where they bond over past experiences and, and, and their powers 
Uh, Forge explains his mutant ability, which is really cool. How they kind of explain, you know, he just basically, you know, he can invent and create anything. He can, whatever he yeah. kind of imagines, right? Is that what yes. you kind of got from that? He's, I love Forge. I love, love, love Forge as a character. Um, I love the Forge Storm story. It's awesome. Uh, oh my gosh. Um, in the comics, how she loses her powers, she does get hit by one of those guns, but it's from the government. It's from the government and come to find out Forge had been working for the mutant task force and he's the one who invented the gun that hit her and took her powers away. Right. Yeah. They tied it in. She uh, had yeah, already fallen in love with him and was dating. And then she finds out it just devastates her. And I love how they've worked that into the story in this way. Like we've said before, you have a very limited amount of time for them to fit a lot of story. in, so they tend to condense it. And I like the way that they have shaped it into this brief amount of time. You get a lot of emotion in, in this He's laying down some some Bridgerton romance. You a goddess with or without powers, like oh, mm. porch. <sighs> but I I love this story, and I think mm. the next episode it's going to be a lot meatier. You know, they're gonna it's going to be the yeah. story that they use this to just set up the next one. Ah. I, I'm just rambling because I just loved it. I just <laughs> yeah, so it was pretty good. Really so before, before the reveal, we got to the point where he, you know, was attempting to help her regain her powers through the experiment. It doesn't work. Again, you see Storm's emotion, which uh, for an animated series, I'm like, uh, again, got to credit the writer. Um, <laughs> they, I never seen so much emotion in, a, in an animated series like these first few episodes. I'm like, man, like you really kind of you know, empathize yeah. with with Storm anytime, right? So that was cool. That was I'm cool. Really, I'm really curious to see how they they do the rest of the Storm Forge story because it's such a deep connection that they end up having very complex and they they go through a lot together. They really, really do. I'm just Really, really shout out to that man behinds. <laughs> so like, yeah, that's so funny, Music City. Oh, but yeah, I, I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after the experiments do doesn't work, uh again, Storm, you know, it's kind of being inquisitive here. Like, you know, as you was mentioning before, you know, she was inquiring, you know, why does he care so much? Why is he mm -hmm. so, you know, bent on uh helping her? This when he reveals his uh, pass as a government contractor and that ties in like you said that weapon um that actually took her power uh, again he's a genius and really looking forward to the, the the future with forge but uh i thought this was a really cool shot of x factor the government yes. contractor team i was like yo can, <laughs> we, that was dope. can we talk about this man's deep love for cut off jean shorts they had um, to show that picture of him on the beach like three times. <laughs> he just keep uh, going back to it. Him and his jorts. Yeah. He's I got really, nice legs. That didn't register with me that much, but um <laughs> but this here was really cool. <laughs> X Factor. Uh again, having uh Quicksilver there, Havoc. You could do so much. If they do like a spinoff or something of X Factor, like, oh, that would be kind of needs, needs to happen. That would be just so saying. cool. And I, I just, yes, I, I have to just reiterate. I don't know if I've even said this Forge before, but I have a right fake leg too. And so with mm. Forge having his right fake leg, when I was a kid, I was like, ah, I want his superpower. I want to be able to make myself really cool James Bond legs and stuff too. So I'm always excited mm. to see, you know, MPG superheroes. A lot of potential for, and if you remember in the old animated series, like we didn't, we didn't get much forge at all. We got those future shots of them. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm just kidding. a smart guy pushing buttons, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> so we actually getting his backstory again, the X factor 
And then, man, I'm looking forward to whatever they do uh, with the character going forward. Now, Storm is upset, understandably. I mean, I, you know, I'm trying to think from all angles here. You know, he's trying to help her, but he's kind of he's responsible for her losing her powers. So I, a little conflict. I think there. she's conflicted. She's really yeah. conflicted because she does really like this person, and she is very grateful to him, and she knows. Because, I mean, she's Storm. Storm is one of the most empathetic, understanding people ever. And she knows that what happened to her is not directly his doing. Like, he didn't mm -hmm. do this to her as anything out of malice. You know, someone took his work and used it against her. But she's also a highly principled person. So I think her main issue is she's trying to reconcile these feelings without mm -hmm. compromising any of her values mm -hmm. you know what i mean definitely definitely <laughs> so and of course you know for just like most men we 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 probably don't know the right time to say stuff he professes yeah. his love to her while she's upset uh you just think about the time of the month like you may not want to say certain things uh so she's like saying that leaves. time of the month still <laughs> <laughs> she storms away. Uh, oh, I see night. what you did there. <laughs> and, um, <and> she, <laughs> she, but she thinks she's like riding a horse and jumping off this cliff, but she ends back at Forge's cabin. Turns out his machinations of the owl, which is really transformed to the demon called the adversary, which is in the comics, is very connected with the Forge background. Um, but anyway, here. You know, making he wants to feast on Storm's fear. Cliffhanger ending, Danny. Um, really abrupt. What'd you think? With, well, with this first of all, um, half my mom's family is Native American. We're Osage and Navajo on on that side, and owls are bad. <laughs> like owls mean death. So all of a sudden, not only is it a a giant owl it's a giant scary death owl and forge is cheyenne he's from montana and he is a shaman so it's very connected deeply rooted in those native american beliefs so i love in a way <laughs> that they chose this scary owl to be you know the bad guy to be the adversary but dear god like no Native American person can look at the screen when that's going on. Like, <laughs> like hmm. I can't make eye contact with this owl because they're messengers of death. It's just scary. It was really, it was terrifying. And I love hated it. <laughs> uh, understood. Understood. But, you know, definitely when this episode started, or this portion of the episode, I knew we only had so much time to get to the story. But again, Credit the structure of the show, the writing, the animation. It got to the point pretty quick mm -hmm. in Forge and Storm's relationship because that took several issues in the comics. Um, you got Forge's backstory, which I thought was really important. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, why do you care about, you know, who is this guy, right? That's setting it that up. And then that's going to pay off in future with, yes. you know, Bishop is going to future Forge as well. Yes. So really cool. You got to really hand it to them how much information and story building and character development they're doing in such a short amount of time and we're not really feeling like we're we're missing out like we're being gypped or anything so right yeah it, that was one thing because i think what was that last week yeah the the madeline Pryor goblin queen thing um when i was like man they got through a whole bunch of story but they really hit the beats, even mm -hmm. though it was a fast, you know, resolution with that. So, hey, quality, quality again. Yeah. Though the Jubilee part, you know, like five minutes, probably too long for, for my taste, but cool throwbacks on the Jubilee part. And then, like I said, the X Factor, Forge, all that stuff. Perfect, they they got him in these shorts, man. They got him in those cutoff jeans shorts, though. It's so like really and then now, they kept showing that picture like they really are <laughs> proud of those tight little short shorts he seems to be uh and <laughs> forge does now, love his short shorts now next week is actually it's an episode called remember it 
um we won't get part two of this life death until a week after that so two weeks from now we get the part two which i wonder if the next episode is the future forge maybe with bishop and then they come back and finish the past who knows you know uh, i think that's a good uh a good speculation i can see Mm -hmm. that happening yeah, I, I do speculations for fun. So, um, great episode. Loving the series. Next week, Danny will not be here, but the show no. must go on somehow. Uh, with it. And we'll see if she's back in time for a Life Death Part 2. Or oh, as, obviously as soon, I, I hope obviously so. As soon as you're, yeah, as soon I'll as just you're be like, I'll just get ready. wheeled up here, up to my desk in the chair. Just wheel me. You take as much time. Take as much time as you need, Danny. Definitely. Oh, thank we, you. Can I? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and you know just let you know. Um, so <laughs> another great episode. We'll see what happens next week. Uh, I want to get Danny's take on a few other things. We, we're going to talk about the Supergirl director in just a moment, and uh, but there's a few news items that popped up since Danny is here. We get the bounces off of her. The the Matrix Five. Matrix 5 is apparently coming. Writer and director Drew Goddard uh, is tasked to do it. We don't know anything else beyond that. What do you think about this announcement and just uh, any expectations whatsoever for Matrix? Look, real quick, y'all. I got these like dog chew sticks for my dog and they freaking reek. Like I just opened it. It's like mm. that's bad. <laughs> um i have zero hope for this i have zero (laughs) hope um i watched the that last one with keanu in it um Mm -hmm. was it resurrections um that was just one of the most pointless movies i've ever seen it just it was awful um why it's like right now there's this aversion to things drew goddard is talented i'll give you that but ask yourself the question do we really need another matrix movie i mean the the original trilogy seemed to wrap things up pretty tightly it it seemed like yeah that's good i'm i'm satisfied with that um it i think it would be cool to do maybe prequels if you guys are old Mm. enough when those movies were coming out, there was like a series of animated shorts you could find online that told you about uh, the robot mm-hmm. revolution and all that stuff. I think that mm-hmm. would be more interesting to me than just kind of beating a dead horse at this point. We've already been there. We've already done that. Mm-hmm. Why are we rehashing it? And we're not exactly living in a time where Hollywood is giving the right amount of attention to things it, they're not giving we're not getting the amount of quality that we should in certain things so i just i feel like hollywood's gonna hollywood it if it if and when it happens and i just can we not can we just come up with something new and original <laughs> instead of taking gen x's toys and playing very roughly with them like so you feel like just this story is kind of just done, you know, like, yeah, that story's feels kind of done complete. To me. Mm-hmm. It feels mm-hmm. done. And like I said, that last, uh, that's right. Real talk. They were on, they were on Toonami, those animated shorts I was talking mm-hmm. about. Um, <clears throat> that last movie just didn't feel necessary. And mm-hmm. it came through. <laughs> it came, it came through. Um, <laughs> Dave and I were pretty stoked to watch it. We're nineties kids, you know, we grew up in came of age in the nineties. And so we're like, yeah, let's watch this. And we were like, what? I'm just glad I didn't go to theaters. Like I'm glad it was uh, streaming at the same time. So I was like, I was like, okay, I didn't waste money. (laughs) It reminded me of, it's one of those straight to video, straight to VHS. Mm-hmm. It's a straight mm-hmm. to VHS. So I'll give the Resurrections credit. First off, yes, it's, it's a bad movie. But um, the <laughs> first, <laughs> the first twenty minutes, I thought they were building up something interesting, like with the pills and stuff. And I was mm-hmm. like, hey, maybe they're going to do something cool here. Mm-hmm. 
and then they didn't, right? I'm a huge fan of Jessica Henwick. Like I, I actually love her. I, I won't. I won't creep her out in person if I see her. But uh, they didn't use her effectively. You know, it, it just it was so many missed opportunities. Yes, you know, but it then, was. Then they don't bring back Morphe. They bring another Morphe. Yeah, I know. Where is yeah. Cowboy Curtis? Like how, you just, can't do this to us. No, Lawrence Fishburne is a, a staple of the Matrix. Yeah. And, and like, did you not ask him? <laughs> and I don't know if you, uh, you know, I know my, most of my viewers know my disdain for Yahya Abdul Mateen II uh, for different reasons, but just no, you don't bring him instead of Lawrence Fishburne. That's a no, no. Okay, so anyway, you won't anyway. be watching the Wonder Man series. I take it. I'm going to so for just for content. I'm going to check out anything. I'm not a fan of his acting at all. I'm not a fan of that guy's acting. Like I, I thought he was like you know, another rising star or something, and then. I saw Candyman. Long story. Long story. I think he's cute. So, <laughs> well, I don't judge performances like that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, anyway, enough of stopping Matrix. Um, I drew got as, as someone said in the chat. Drew Goddard is a very uh, he is. talented, you know, writer director. He helped launch Daredevil on Netflix, right? Like. Yes, I'm gonna give him a lot of credit for that, right? Yes. You, you do that, bro. You and he did with the Martian. He did like other, you know, several talented things. He's a part of James Gunn's writing room, Danny. Uh, he's a part of the DC Studios writing room as Drew well. Drew Goddard so. is wonderful, but the the problem <laughs> isn't Drew Goddard. The yeah. problem is the non creatives, the studio executives. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what you need to to consider. You can have a great writer. You can have a great director. But studio executives, they're the ones who tell them what to do. Creatives don't have full creative reign anymore. Mm. They have bosses. <laughs> it yeah. sucks. Yeah, mostly they make, they judge, you know, money people kind of make the decision instead of the creatives, yeah, which is exactly. weird. Um, we got a bunch of accountants yeah. telling us how to create art. Yeah. <laughs> To sell toys or you know bottom mm -hmm. lines or whatever. It's all and about the merch. The funny thing, because the Wachowskis, one of them is attached as an executive producer uh, of this film. They directed the last film, Resurrections, which was kind of like a middle finger to Warner Brothers. It, 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 I wish the film was better because like, it was like a meta conversation that they're making fun of Warner Brothers in the Matrix film. Uh, but again, it was bad, bad execution. It's so. terrible. <laughs> so terrible all around uh, when I do review Matrix 5 whenever it comes out I mean if they get this in production like what, end of this year next year probably 2026 uh, I won't have Danny on to review it because she hates it but uh, let's go <laughs> let's go <laughs> another another uh, news thing that came up and I have a half a picture for some reason um, Fantastic Four actually let me go to we got a casting update Dying to get Danny's take on all this stuff. Fantastic Four. We know the four uh, that's coming. Love all the four casting so far, uh, especially Vanessa Kirby. Shout out to Vanessa Kirby uh, and the rest of the crew there. Uh, Joseph Quinn is popping up in a lot of different projects. So I always say he's a part of Illuminati now because he's getting too much work. That's just that's how it goes. Um, Julia Garner has joined the cast, Danny, as... Um, female silver surfer, which is like a four letter word on the internet now. Um, what, what are your thoughts with this and this character that is a real character in the comics, but somehow briefly it's wrong? It is a brief character in on Earth X in, in an obscure alternate reality. Um, it feels a little bit like a cop out to me. Um, when all of this was first you know being kicked around and stuff i was told a female herald of galactus the words were specific a female herald of galactus and that to me was like okay so it's not silver surfer it's probably it's going to be nova because there's been those they're the two main heralds so it'll be nova frankie ray frankie ray is awesome she's snarky she's a bit of a shithead 
Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, she's she's cool and she's rescued Silver Surfer and stuff like that. Um, so I was like, yay, we'll get some Frankie Ray. And then it drops yesterday that she's Shala Ball, Norinrad's wife, uh, Silver Surfer. And I'm like, oh, they're really doing it. Like, that is such a out of left field weird thing to pick now i know that they are doing this alternate universe thing mm. and that by the end of the movie they'll be part of the main mcu continuity right. but i'm wondering how that's going to translate with shala ball i just i feel like it's an excuse so that mm -hmm. when people are like hey i thought you were gonna i thought you said you were gonna stop doing this so much and they're like well mm -hmm. we didn't gender swap there's a precedent it was in the comics i'm like yeah like that five people read <laughs> right how I many mean, years so ago? so i'm always up for you know getting on disney about you know just doing this you know the everyone everyone looks at the whole diversity checklist that's well publicized like I have a certain number of qualifiers for each project. It's a real thing, you know. That's it is what Disney really does. Um, I could kind of reinforce that. Yeah, well, you know, and I, I'll, I'll read his quote in a moment on that. But he basically was just like, you know, we're not all about being woke, but we're still going to tell these types of stories. So it was like a he's talking See, both sides okay, of his mouth. You like read that, that yeah. article too. Yeah, and yeah. And we'll I was touch like, on that. I shared it, and I was like, I don't even think this dude even realizes when he's lying anymore. Like I don't, it's like he literally was talking on both sides. Like he exactly. literally did that in real time. But see, and that's what makes it hard. Cause like in this case right here, I understand people got upset about like the race swap century. Um, or let's go back to the Josh Trank race swap, Johnny Storm. Love Michael B. Jordan. Mm -hmm. Terrible idea to race swap him, right? This here though, <laughs> I hate to say it, like there is I think precedent. people are I think people are just bitching right now. I'm sorry. Like, this well, is a real character in the comic. And if, we're no, if we know, one second, if we know this is an alternate universe, Danny, mm -hmm. that's literally in the comics. They're separated by realities. So I only can think this is a setup, right? For Norn Red. Don't, don't you know? I, I hope so. Because in, in that only story, in the only story where there was a female silver surfer, and that was Shala Ball, and the only story where that's happened, it was both her and Norrin Red. They were known as the twin surfers. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I hope that that's what that means because I'm going to be honest with you, and I don't normally, you know, go too hard on inflammatory opinions, mm -hmm. but my opinion is anytime you race or gender swap something, it is insulting to both genders and both races. Because huh. you're telling the the original one that they, you know, it's not, you're not important. Or, or fans then, of that. Yeah. Right. And then the you're telling the, the race or gender that you're swapping it to that we don't think you're strong or interesting enough on your own to carry your own right, so here's a bone. character. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm just a little worried. <laughs> that they keep doing that and that they're using the Shala Ball thing as kind of a cop out. Like, no, see, mm -hmm. see, it's real. I'm like, yeah, but barely. <laughs> and see, and, and that's why I say it's like, I can't believe, like, uh, on my timeline, I'm defending Disney today. I don't know why that it is falling that. upon me. <laughs> but literally, I think this is a total non issue. I really, really like. I, again, we've acknowledged this is not a swap or anything. This is literally like it, it, they use Frankie mm -hmm. Ray, Nova. That would have been attached to Johnny Storm, right? That would have been more mm -hmm. of a Johnny Storm angle. That's his girlfriend in the comics, Frankie Ray. And then it would be like, oh, hey, maybe you won't see Norn Red because we got this whole storyline here. Shala Ball is literally her story is connected with Norn Red. Like she, they're I'm twin more, and now, surfers. Now, there's been rumors and reports I haven't heard, no, like a month ago. Norm Red is coming to the MCU. What is his name? Okay, so there was an actor, Josh from Den of Nerds showed me. Um, I cannot think of his name. He was in, uh, what was that call center movie? Um, please. 
Mm. I can't remember what it was called. I cannot think of this dude's name. But he had oh. posted on his Instagram mm -hmm. that, uh, oh, I thought it was me. That's cool. <laughs> but then he deleted it. I wish I could. I, I, I think I remember what you're talking about, too. I forgot. Yeah, I'm looking for it now because it was that post that I got <laughs> ripped apart on. Um, <laughs> but I can't find it. He's a, he's a good dude. For some reason, the only movie or the first movie that's really popping into my head that he was in. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Lakeith Stanfield. That's who it was. Lakeith Stanfield. Oh, um, that's a left, left curve, curve. Ball. Right. Okay. So apparently Great actor, but okay. he was up for silver surfer and they posted this and he acted all surprised. Like, Oh, I thought it was me, but then like immediately he deletes it. So maybe oh. he is Norrin Rad. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it could be you, you remember like the old Fantastic Four, Danny, um uh the rise of the silver surfer. Yeah, Lawrence Fishburne. Mm -hmm. Oh, Cowboy oh, Curtis again. So it's more of a CGI, you know, mm -hmm. motion capture. I can see Lakeith Stanfield doing that, right? Like, I mean, that, that, that would be great. I, I don't I haven't heard anything with that, but I know Norrin Rad's coming. I'll say that. And this is a Fantastic Four film. This is not a Silver Surfer film. I can understand this is a Silver Surfer project. And it's like, wait a minute. This isn't Silver Surfer. You know, this is Shala Ball, right? And, you I know, someone else raised a really interesting point, And I wish I could remember um, this person's name or who, who said it. But because it is for a fact taking place in an alternate universe mm -hmm. does this means we could actually see galactus devour the earth we could see it i think galactus wins yeah i think he wins in this and that's somehow how the fantastic four ends up in the main mcu continuity mm -hmm. they escape mm -hmm. right, right. They i, I really believe because yeah um i definitely believe the just reports and even what I'm hearing with that is that again that alternate reality they're in the 60s mm -hmm. uh, through the course of the film by the end of it they end up you know in the main or whatever's becoming the main <laughs> 616 right so it's gonna be the time traveling alternate reality and again shallow ball like this literally fits you know what we know that's happening in this film so I like I said Disney's track record and I get it again I don't know why I'm the person that's defending Disney, but <laughs> I don't know either, bro. Right. Because even when they're right, I'm just like I'm not saying nothing. I, I, and I get, <laughs> I'm not I get it, right? these people. <laughs> I, I create, I create a target of myself all the time, but I, I can't stand by and people say this is some kind of gender swap because it's literally not. It's literally not. But I get it. It's Disney, you know. Then I agree. Read comic actually, books. Let me read. Let me read his quote here because, like. He spoke on this woke. Uh, he denied yeah, the woke read it agenda because I was like, right? and I've got this dude. I don't know who this guy is, but this dude follows me. I don't know why he follows me because he's so contrary. Like everything I say, he's like, "Uh, well, how's that? <laughs> what exactly is he lying about? Like, did you read the <laughs> the article? Oh, yes. that's what they attacked you over. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So okay. So the quote he uh, he seemed to acknowledge the critiques of mm -hmm. Disney's content as being woke um, may have a certain degree of merit. He said the term woke is thrown around rather liberally. Yeah, no point. This this came out of his mouth. Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> he literally said this. I like said it's thrown around liberally. No pun intended. Like I yeah, guess. and then he says Who's I don't this? even think they know what it means. No, we yeah. do. We do. Said, I don't think a lot of people don't even understand what it really means. Uh, he says, I think the noise is sort of quiet down. I, have you seen? No. <laughs> have you seen what we're talking about today? This, I do like this is the most yeah. tone deaf, out of touch yeah. dude. Yeah. Out there, like this, this guy has no freaking clue what's really going on. He's so out of touch with reality; it's mind numbing. And then he talks about, you know, the dude that was trying to get the the two seats he's like basically he would have quit if this guy got those two seats because he said it would have been too distracting to do what we right they wouldn't do. be able to coexist yeah yeah and so 
it's like again, I, Disney's track record. Iger is not doing himself any favors no. with, with these comments. But it's like this is literally the one time I'm like, hey, I think people are overreacting with the uh, with the shallow ball. But um, he said, uh, I've been preaching this for a long time at the company before I left. Since I came <laughs> back, that our number one goal is to entertain. Uh, the bottom line is that infusing messaging as a sort of a number one priority in our films and TV shows is not what we're up to. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, like that. That's what I'm saying. He, he doesn't get a pass and I get it. I'm mm -mm. still going to stand my ground with the shallow ball thing, but th these comments aren't doing him a favor. Well, and just for the record to the individual who was, you know, oh, what's he lying about then? That's what he's lying about. <laughs> yeah. Like literally. Even, yeah, he doesn't even, I don't even think he knows that he's lying anymore. He's just talking out of his ass. I'm going to reread that part. I'm going to really just go. Yeah, read like, it again. This read was the again. part where I was like, I'm like, uh -huh. this dude. Because I thought he was on to something saying, hey, people don't know what woke me because people call everything woke. So I was like, oh, you probably got a point, Iger. But he says, uh, infusing messaging as some sort of number one priority in our films and TV shows is not what we're up to. Bro, you have like a whole section on Disney+. Plus. That's about messaging and uh, targeted diversity. And uh, that's literally the point of that section in Disney Plus. But, you know, um, it says he says they need to be entertaining or the Disney company can have a positive impact on the world. That sounds like messaging. It that's is literally what it sounds like. And um, according to <clears throat> my friend, I told you about on the set of The Acolyte that Disney has an idea of how they want people to be and exist as and behave as. And they know that the way to do that is to start with the kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You start with the kids. So yes, there is an absolute agenda to train these kids in their idea of how society and people should be. No. Yeah, and that's, it, it just, it's unfortunate the timing with, again, with the with the, the Shia Ball, the I think this is going to be a wonderful actress, Julia Gardner. I, I've seen more of her clips, you know, after this announcement. I think she's going to do great. And th this is just terrible timing for her. Yeah. Because she's going to get this online vitriol when she's literally just playing a role from the comics. Like, this, I don't see any pain in that. We'll see the execution. If yeah. Like just if that's what really matters. Yeah, then we'll and see. It's not like they haven't pulled out obscure characters from Marvel's past and made them great. For mm -hmm. point case in point, Guardians of the Galaxy. They exactly. they were kind of a deep cut in Marvel. I mean, they've made them way popular now, but Guardians of the Galaxy were definitely not one of the most popular Marvel books out there, and they made it absolutely awesome. Um so it's there's always a chance they could mm -hmm. be good, but I they, they have not had a great track record lately, and I think that's why yeah. people are freaking out. They're pre freaking out. They haven't seen anything yet, and that's so yeah. With the arguments out. that I'm having on, on social media, it's, it's again, it's the I can't trust Disney. And I'm like, yo, like as a Norn Rad fan, like he just had a, a really cool run. Um, Ron Martz, if, if people read comics out there. Great run with Silver Surfer. You got Mephisto. You got cool stuff in there. Like, I love the cosmic thing. When I see Shallow Balls a part of this, I'm like, oh, he's showing up. Like, no, it's no way possible. But again, it's just the, if he the perception does it, of Disney. Oh, yeah. We're right. Yeah, we right. Yeah, we we right. We stormed the, you know, <laughs> Disney stormed headquarters. The at this point, you know what I'm saying? So, so very interesting. Um, appreciate your take on that. And uh, anytime we get to disagree, that's pretty cool. Uh, that we, we can do that. So, uh, so I'm with, sorry, uh, I'm not ripping you to shreds and calling you. Well, hey, that's, a, that's usually what's <laughs> supposed to happen out there, you know what I mean? But it's okay to have opinions, folks. You know, we still can coexist. So, um, let's get to. <laughs> Let's get to our main topic, our final topic with the Supergirl uh, director uh, story here. Uh, let me see. Where's the Craig Galepsi is in talks to direct Supergirl for DC Studios 
this is the guy that directed I Tanya, the Margot Robbie film. Love it was like Oscar Love level. It. Cruella, which was the pandemic film, but you know, Emma, uh, Emma Stone. Um, you know, if people are fans of that, um, he, he had a few pretty good projects actually. Mm-hmm. He does a lot of low budget stuff. Are you familiar with this director's work at all? And yeah. I guess what do you think that well, was mean for, for Super what Group? was that other movie he did? Um, yeah, Dumb Money, which is yes, like Pete okay. So yeah. I'm I love Dumb Money and I love I Tanya. I, I mm-hmm. love those movies, I thought he did absolutely wonderful with them um they're very tonally (laughs) yeah girl of thrones as the house of supergirl um Mm. the genres are totally different from a superhero movie first and foremost he those were actually like documentary type you know they're biographies character driven non-fiction yeah they're Mm non-fiction the first one is about the GameStop thing yeah and then the other one is about tanya harding the figure skater Mm -hmm. he did an excellent job with those films so i have faith in him as a director we'll have to Mm -hmm. wait and see how he does with a superhero film right because this is big this is going to easily be probably the most expensive thing he's ever done and like you said Mm -hmm. he's had more character driven you know scaled down type you know Mm -hmm. uh, stories which he's great in um female-led films which let me get your take on this um because automatically and this we talk about diversity and stuff like this all the time but um automatic i saw a few people saying though he's an accomplished director it's like oh a woman should direct supergirl and i'm like is that necessary though i how about the best person for the job the best director we can find which that should be the, the, the prerequisite right now. Right. I mean, I if it happens feel, to be a woman, great. If not, it's right. not that big of a deal. They're not the one putting on the super suit. Right. If if the film is like literally like a you know a character study of Supergirl, then maybe a part of the writing room, you have women involved, probably that'll help just with the writing portion. Mm-hmm. But him as a director, that's all he's doing is directing it. Mm-hmm. And a woman did write the script. Now it was her first script ever, so we'll see how that. Anna Nagara. We'll see how that how that turns out for her. But but um I I you know like I I said this and I don't know if this was controversial when I said it, but when they made uh Black Panther, Ryan Cougar, very talented, him and his brother, very talented. Um I feel if you was trying to get a culture across, yeah, you should have black folks involved with the writing with that. But a director is only directing, you know what's mm-hmm. actually written so i just I, you know and that's just my stance on that but i think he's a great director mm-hmm. i think most money he's gonna have spent on a film um you know uh, going forward they're supposed to go in production um end of this year uh danny's are you are you kind of excited for supergirl i know we won't know much about it but oh um i'm just real cautious right now with everything mm-hmm. dc uh everything is every project yeah he probably will <laughs> like that's what Favreau <laughs> does that's what Favreau does with star wars he ghost directs and get those notes it's gonna be like, yeah. they call it the voice of god um mm-hmm. but i'm just i'm very cautious with everything mm-hmm. dc right now because they're so dangling on this edge this really precarious cliff and every project they do like all of these projects have to do well like all Mm -hmm. of them they have to do well for the dcu to continue and these things feel like they're they're going into production really fast you know Mm -hmm. like did did you read the script a couple times did did we (laughs) you know that whole measure twice cut once thing like did you did you really go through it I don't yeah. know. Like this is her if, first if, script ever, and yeah. it's a supergirl so movie. She she wrote uh plays prior to this, which obviously a totally different medium, you know, than a totally. movie script. You know, so yes, I have a lot of trepidation with just so hey, she could end up being great, right? But it's just you have nothing she under could. your belt. She absolutely could, but we got to we've got to consider the facts, you know, we have to be realistic. 
Like, yeah. what are the chances? What are the odds? <laughs> what are the Vegas numbers on her first script ever being a banger? <laughs> You raise a good point with that, uh, Danny. That I probably can't refute that one, but it's like, you know, I look at it like you was mentioning they're putting a lot of stuff in production. As I've reported for probably the last two months, uh, they're definitely fast tracking. It's going to be at least six projects in production this year. People yeah. scoffed at me after the strike when I was saying that. That's just what I'm hearing now. You see, the Supergirl, Superman's already in production. Uh, Landers and Booster Gold should go into production and Peacemaker season two. That's six right there, uh, without even counting Creature Commandos. So, this is a fast track. And, but like you said, Danny, like if one, if it's one misstep, like Dude, if he messes up Booster mean? Gold, if they mess up Booster Gold, I will just, I'm, I'm gonna write such a letter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna so care right so hard. I'm going to just unleash my inner middle-aged white lady Karen and <laughs> you go go full Karen full on, Karen on Super Saiyan Karen all hey. over I love Booster Gold I've been waiting a long time I kind of wanted to fail now just to see how dare you, you, know, you gonna... <laughs> but with, with Booster Gold like they gotta nail the casting like um, yes you gotta get homeboy um Glenn Powell yeah Glenn Powell they gotta get mm -hmm. Glenn Powell that will sell it. And it's a series. So it, that's the thing, too, with this fast track, as I call it, for their production. It's only the, as far as theatrical, it's just the Superman and the Supergirl. Mm -hmm. Everything else is streaming. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's some wiggle room there, but I mean, Superman has to hit. I mean, that's the first one. Yes. Has you know, to. Has no, to. You know, now with Supergirl, too, uh, the casting, the people talking about House of Dragons and stuff. Uh, Millie Alcock, I think she could be a star. I, 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 I do really too. do feel that. Yeah. I do too. I was a little surprised. I thought it was going to be Meg Donnelly. I really did. Mm -hmm. But it turned out to be, hey, Sin, how are you? It turned out to be Millie. And I'm a fan of Millie. I love House of the Dragon. And I thought she, she did a very good job. She was just mm -hmm. really good at it. And she yeah. looks, she looks like Supergirl to me. Yeah. She, she has a, I don't know the vibe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, I mean, you comic accurate people out there, like I think this this nails it. Now, I did like I, I I did like the Flash film and Sasha Kaye's Supergirl, more of like an injustice looking Supergirl, but um, I liked it. I just think, uh, yeah, this fits the comics. Uh, Millie Alcott. So, hey, we shall see. We shall see where it occurs with that because. Uh, Hey, it's um, it's now or never for the DCU. It's a lot of pressure on Gunn, man. Like he, he I know he's always online and stuff, all willy nilly. Yeah, like bro, bro. you've got all these projects going into production, <laughs> and you're farting around on on the internet arguing <laughs> with people you don't even know. I'm concerned I'm about you, sir. I'm just saying, he bro, did, like, dude, he. <laughs> I did I did interact with him the <laughs> other right. day though and I was so surprised oh, yeah? he was sharing my toasted ravioli stuff about we're both from St. Louis and he shared my the city of St. Louis by official decree made April 1st toasted ravioli day and T Rabs are a big deal for every St. Louisan and I shared it and he started sharing it. I'm like Dude, did you not just see the thumbnails I posted with you looking all googly eyed? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Gun, he's such an easy target, I tell you, man. Uh, uh, he does it to himself. He does it to himself. He literally does it to himself. And hey, especially him being again co-head of DC Studios, I'm I'm gonna end up talking about him a lot. I mean, yeah, folks, if fan. you if you would like one of my like some stickers or a t-shirt of my gun tweeting from the toilet meme you can go to my merch store and you can purchase those <laughs> promote promote for sure for sure uh yeah, yeah. I, I gotta check out that, that that merch store not not for those items but for other stuff uh but, <laughs> but, uh, but that should be cool um in the chat any last minute comments or questions throw it in, in the chat there as we start winding down this thursday edition Danny's farewell episode, but she'll be back, you know, uh, tomorrow <laughs> at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. I will be 
uh, unconscious <laughs> on, this, on the operating table. Words are hard. <laughs> and I'll uh, definitely be all wishing you a safe, safe travels through that experience. And uh, as soon as possible, um, you know, we'll, we'll see our popping up online more than gun. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> future, but oh, we got Andrea here saying, "How is it that Supergirl is going to production faster than the Batman Part Two? Oh, that's the an easy Danny. answer. <laughs> well, one of these things aren't going to make it. <laughs> one of these things is not getting made. <laughs> How, like, if we just logically, okay, look at this." They had, they announced. And I know announcements isn't doesn't mean much these mm-hmm. days, right? But but uh, early what was this? Early twenty twenty three, they green greenlit the Batman Part Two sequel officially. Mm-hmm. Last CinemaCon, they mm-hmm. did that. Um, Reeves was like, "Yeah, me and my partners we're going to start writing it." You know, this is like six months before the strikes and everything, right? Mm-hmm. Still no script. Gun writes a script, rewrites it, writes Peacemaker season two. Anna Nagara writes Supergirl. Uh, you got people writing Lanterns and Booster Gold. And Reeves can't crack a script like in over a year, probably two years to be quite honest. Um, it's not good writing on a wall right there. That's that's not not sounding right, Danny. Just saying. No. It's not happening. Gun canceled it. You know he did. He's just Midwestern <laughs> openness right now. It's gonna be interesting because you only could kick this down the road only for so long, right? Right. Where you're gonna be like, ah, you know, something else came up. You have people open that. What do you feel about you this? Misunderstood me. You misunderstood <laughs> me. You misunderstood me. I never said it was delayed. <laughs> <laughs> I said it was happening, right? <laughs> you have a. Uh, uh, was it Alan uh, Rickson oh. openly campaigned to be Batman? Let's do but it. Passing, passing is Batman. And th- does that feel weird though? Like, yeah, passing's already and Batman. I was just like, I'm. I keep <laughs> randomly have Frank Miller mm-hmm. comics that I just read for funsies every once in a while, and I watched one of uh, Rickson's things today. And he was like, there, I'll shout it from the mountaintops. I want to be Bruce Wayne. And I was like, you know what? Look at the Frank Miller Batman. He's a a stocky dude. He's a thick, stocky dude. I think Richson can pull it off. Like, I've been watching, I've been watching, um, I got new press kit stuff today for uh, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. And in this clip they sent me, Richson is standing right next to Henry Cavill. And he mm-hmm. makes Henry Cavill look like a skinny little twink. Like mm-hmm. he's that big. Like, let's do it. Let's get let's let's get a freak. That's Miller an easy Batman. choice. What's up, you Red know, Five Network? I mean, yeah. Ben Affleck was pretty, you know, pretty massive, you know, with the boots and stuff as well. And I think Ritson, like, that's an easy uh shoe in right there. But that means Patterson doesn't matter anymore. If you got people openly campaigning, like what why do you need two Batman at this point? Under Warner Brothers, it, it makes no sense to me. Yeah, it, especially when he's like, "We're not going to have a bunch of confusing stuff. We're going to have one actor play one role across all I'm platforms." I'm confused. And then <laughs> I'm totally confused. <laughs> like they just you just failed Zazzle right off the bat. I remember he said that there's not going to be four Batman. There's four Batman right now. <laughs> he doesn't even know what's canon in his own show. And that's Unreal. a fact. He said that himself. <laughs> Our gun. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, well, he, he's figuring it out as he goes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Which means yeah, he doesn't know. He that's doesn't a, know. I mean, that's they, a nice yeah. way of putting it. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, uh, yeah, I feel bad for Reeves and Patterson. Not really, but a little bit. Um, God, I don't like the first movie. But okay, Maria says here, will Sony ever make a classic Spider-Man movie again without MCU involved like they did with Tobey Maguire? How long before we get live action Miles Morales? So that first part, you don't think um, no, like never. a Raimi can do Spidey nope. 4? No. Nope. Uh, well, there is talk that Raimi's going to direct mm-hmm. Spider-Man 4, but mm-hmm. for the MCU. 
I'm telling you, um, Marvel's going to end up buying the rights back to Spider-Man here very soon because Sony is tanking their stock almost as much as Disney's tanking theirs. But <laughs> Sony has been tanking their stock with the low quality stuff they've been putting out. Hello, boom mics in every shot. So what that means is Feige can slide on in with a $5 bill. Like, listen, let me help you out here. That's a $5 just, bill. <laughs> just, just, just hand them all over. So I don't see that happening. Miles Morales is going to be in Spider-Man 4 in the MCU. We'll see him yeah, in 2026. I think that's a perfect time to cameo him. And Sony is mm-hmm. dying to get a live action Miles, um, the animated. Like, when is part two actually going to come out? They didn't even date that yet. It was supposed to be out now. Right, was, and but, but they've put it they're off. And no. They're not really. Well, Sony's not. Sony's being kind of tight-lipped about it. It actually makes sense though, because like, I mean, what uh, the last one came out was it last year, right? So mm-hmm. we kind of, you know, it's cool like to put like a year or two between releases. You know what I mean? It's like I know we like on demand, but it's like the first one. I mean, the part one came out. You got the Oscar buzz and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They didn't pick up any awards, unfortunately. But you got the physical media build up to the next one. You know, you don't have to do year after year, you know. So, but live action, yeah, sooner than later, they want to mm-hmm. get that out. Yes. And I do believe Ramy will do a Toby Maguire. I, I really do believe they're going to do a fourth one. Uh, more certain than that, than like an Andrew Garfield, which I rather Andrew Garfield, uh, I'm quite honest, but uh, don't fight me on that. Um, we got Penny just got home from watching Godzilla Kong. Uh B high B tier film. I didn't do a full review yeah. on that yet. I really I did like it. I did like it. Uh I liked it more than Godzilla vs. Kong. It didn't blow the skirt up. It was <laughs> it was parts in there where again, I'm not huge on the lore and oh, this creature means this. Like, I don't know, you know, if you show me a symbol, I'm supposed to geek out. I don't know. It was parts where it was not a lot of dialogue, obviously, because you're dealing with it, you know, kaijus. But well, and kind of felt the, the girl time. is deaf, <laughs> so she signs most of what she says. Mm-hmm. I have a problem like with that. the. De- I seen a lot of discourse on the timeline. I had no problem with the the little girl. Uh, I love the little going girl, and I think that's that's nice and all. I'm just mm-hmm. I'm an old school Godzilla fan, and mm-hmm. after the last. Uh, there's like one maybe two american godzilla movies that i'm like yeah that's cool but i just really feel like we should leave godzilla to the japanese filmmakers they do it justice godzilla Godzilla minus minus one one was mind-blowing it was so good and i felt like a little kid again watching the old campy low budget japanese movies you know i was like oh it's so good Mm -hmm. and then we get the Godzilla and King Kong. I'm like, this is kind of boring to me compared to, you know, Godzilla minus one. I just, well, mm. well first of all, God, Godzilla minus one. I mean, I, I've said this, it, this is the best Godzilla film I, I've ever seen. I mean, yeah. It's, I it's thought, amazing. Um, it's the best film of 2023. Um, and they showed Hollywood. What's up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, so it, masterful. I will say, yeah, definitely. Um, that's a better film, definitely than Godzilla and Kong. Mm-hmm. But Godzilla and Kong, like I said, it's entertaining. I'm gonna get that on 4K and all that stuff, so it's all good. Um, so yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, got yeah, Maria here said, who should be the villain for Supergirl? Interesting. Power Girl. Uh, oh, now that would be great. Mm-hmm. That would be great. Do the alternate, you know, version. Of Supergirl, I was thinking Maxwell Lord, since we already know Maxwell Lord's coming, and it could be a connection there because just in comics he pops up. I just had a really bad premonition that Gunn is going to take Wonder Woman's story with Maxwell Lord and give it to Millie Alcox Supergirl, mm-hmm. and that will tick me off. <laughs> Because that was such a groundbreaking, important storyline, not just for Wonder Woman, but for DC. And that moment was given to Wonder Woman. She's the only one of the heroes to actually take a human life. And she did it on Mm. international television to save the world. I'm so sorry. Mm. Um, 
it was it's one of the most important dc storylines of the last 20 30 years and they totally peed on it with wonder woman 84 if they take that story and they give it to supergirl karen's gonna come out i'm just saying because because when you say supergirl villains i'm just trying to think of like you know just comic precedents and they already announced maxwell lord now what i want to happen uh which i don't think we're getting this type of supergirl is a new 52 supergirl and that's the one that got the red lantern ring mm-hmm. and that was a really cool storyline because just with her anger and, and angst uh that was perfect 52. you get atrocities but gun's not going to do that i don't think but no because um, he knows nobody likes the new 52 like nobody Bobby. rebirth is good still don't you some start good, with me some good stuff we, we, we could fight about that some other time uh the but uh too is when they made wonder woman look like rogue and they took away like her origin well, story and everything i wanted to kick people in the face there's a, there's aspects of new 52 i didn't like now the whole um superman one woman relationship that was unnecessary i thought that was unnecessary everyone mm-hmm. knows it's batman she she pines yeah for. that was some weird but in new 52 you got uh scott snyder's batman court of vows which is the court top of three batman runs ever so that is you know all new 52 is not bad that's all i'm trying to say not all of it but still there's a lot of it where you're like what the actual hell and then they finally recognize that yeah this is not going over well and we got rebirth and then we got you know, everyone explained, they explained it that Dr. Manhattan was just messing with realities. Mm, it right. was all Dr. Manhattan's fault. So maybe Dr. Yeah. Manhattan can be the bad guy. <laughs> oh, it's end. It'll be a very boring ending because like, it's like, yeah. very inconsequential with him. But <laughs> like I said, it's potential with Supergirl in, you know, but I, I really do believe Maxwell Lord is going to have some kind of part uh, and probably Lex Luthor as well. Um that is what it is. But uh, Real Talk is talking about, uh, let's see, Miles, introducing Miles in Secret Wars. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know everyone's like jumping on the train saying, yeah, Miles is coming at this time. Yeah, I, I got video evidence of all that stuff that Mikey talked about. So when it, when it's confirmed, I always drop the link. I'll let everybody talk for now, you know. So it's all good, Carlos. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. Um, so as we wind this down, um. Coming up for the as far as my platform, um, we'll keep an eye definitely on the uh, Patreon links. Links in the description. Did a couple uploads today. Expanded coverage, as I say, on the Patreon. Because you know, when I'm live over here, you know, I, I want you know Danny to talk. I want other people to talk over here sometimes. So <laughs> just me and you, this Patreons. Uh, and then members uploads is coming as well. Uh, and what else are we doing? Um and then next week, like Danny will be out for, for a couple weeks. Um, and you're shutting it down tomorrow, right? Yeah, I go. I have to be at the hospital at 11 in the morning and uh, have surgery that tomorrow afternoon. And uh, I'll be out all. Thank you, Maria Graciela. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I'm saying it's at least a week. I don't want to mm-hmm. give anyone anything definitive. Okay, yes, Guy Gardner. He was perfect as a Red Lantern. <sighs> with the, but I still yeah, don't, red I'm still not a big fan of the New 52. Um, <laughs> There's some good stuff in New 52, for sure. But for um, sure. I don't want to say anything beyond, you know, a week or you say, okay, it'll just be two weeks, and then I'm not feeling it. I'm still in a lot of pain or or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I don't want to be a liar. So <laughs> right. No, as much yeah, as it's much time you need to week. yeah, as much time you need to recoup. Uh, you know, we'll we'll keep the lights on uh until then. And uh, you know, uh, I'm sure you have a lot, you know, you'll be catching up on a lot of stuff. So there'll be plenty to talk about when you're Back on the Thursday edition, uh, says another two says, not the Batman biggest fan, but I admit it was disappointing to see the sequel get delayed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. same here. Patterson, I, I wasn't a fan at all of that first film. I, I can't, I fell asleep in theaters watching it, and then I wasn't able to watch it again <laughs> streaming. Um, and all Reeves fans attacked me because of that. And so, 
<laughs> I talked to, um, so we all know that the actual main creator of Batman was not Bob Kane. It was a man named Bill Finger. We know this now. Mm -hmm. I have the absolute honor to call his granddaughter a friend of mine. And when uh, Batman came out, I asked her what she thought. And she said, it was too long. <laughs> it was too long. She just wasn't really that into it. And yes, Captain, we did talk Fantastic Four. We're winding down. I'm sorry. But you mm -hmm. can rewind and catch the rewatch. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, we, yeah we, me and Danny was arguing about a uh, yeah, female silver surfer. Yes. Um, Captain Squadron says, but that penguin, though. Uh, oh, yeah. Did we talk Colin about Penguin? Man, you probably didn't talk about that. Uh, what Colin um, Farrell did amazing, yeah. and you know, mm -hmm. I do. I'm amateur special effects artist. I have friends that you know do this in mm -hmm. Hollywood, and he, they were so impressed by Colin Farrell's prosthetic makeup. Like Colin Farrell was going out to Starbucks and stuff to test it, and nobody recognized him. And right. people would not stand next to him because they were so creeped out by him. But mm. that makeup is amazing. And Colin Farrell just just nailed it, right? Yeah, he was awesome. He was awesome. That's probably the only one of the things I did enjoy <laughs> of the Batman was Colin Farrell. So I'm looking forward to that series for sure. Um, as long as passing doesn't show up. Um, so <laughs> As we close this down again, if y'all coming in late, rewind to the beginning there. Um, shout out to those over there on Danny's uh platforms on YouTube, X Twitter, uh, my X Twitter page as well. Appreciate all the views y'all give me over there. Continue to engage, like, and share over there, and then on YouTube, keep engaging as well. Any last things you want to throw out there, Danny? Since you're gonna be gone for like a month. Uh, thank you so much. Please smash the like button. If you are not subscribed to my channel, I really hope you give me a shot. Hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to make that sacrifice for algorithm overlords. You can follow me on Twitter. I have a new merch store on Redbubble. I have a Patreon as well. So any support you can give is awesome you don't have to but i appreciate it i do this for funsies but you guys are great and still your people are just the absolute best i absolutely love them <laughs> they make me so happy i um, love talking to you guys it's always a pleasure coming on the show for sure for sure and she said you don't have to i'm saying you have to subscribe to her channel buy stuff and all that stuff and you know it, it's okay to like stuff as well uh <laughs> out there but it's always fun to argue with, with danny so so uh but definitely we do wish you the best danny looking forward to you coming back but we'll be keeping an eye on your page uh on your twitter and stuff too so thank you much love to everybody in the chat still nation mikey vs forever till next time still nation. Stay tuned. Still up though, ink through, speak to as he bring the news. Crack the talk, stay brew, kick back, get real comfortable. Here to stay, no one delay, make sure I be's informed. On the road, on the go, playing ball on that pavement floor. That's the lifestyle right now, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Guaranteed, all week's going to always be on time. That's my word, y'all heard from El Davino Vegas mouth. What's the worst, much more than what these networks talk about?